Gunpowder Milkshake, rated R on Netflix grade, C+, just call it it, Jane Wick, for crying out loud. Gunpowder Milkshake, a title so bad it hurts to type, is such a, John Wick, knockoff, it might be copyright infringement. Essentially a female forward version of the, Wick, films, Gunpowder Milkshake, gives some very talented actors the chance to cash in on a possible action film franchise. But this first entry is so weak, that I'm not sure it will happen. Young Samantha aka Sam, Karen Gillan as an adult, Freya Allen as a girl, is tired of waiting on her professional hit person mother Scarlett, Lena Hetty, who works for a group of old white men known as The Firm. Fifteen years later, Sam is the hit person of choice, and she is sent to clean up a mess, and kills the son of a Mr. Big. Sam tools around in a vintage 1980s Porsche in what looks like a Berlin. The film was shot at legendary Babelsberg Studios' version of Gotham. When she isn't beating up the boneheads, her boss Nathan, Paul Giamatti in acting hell, sends to rough her up, she's killing four thugs decked out in masks of the monsters of the golden age of universal horror. Sam also accidentally shoots an accountant, Samuel Anderson, whose eight-year-old daughter Emily, the talented Chloe Coleman of My Spy, is being held captive by the bad guys. Almost everybody is a bad guy in Gunpowder Milkshake, because guys are bad, right? Sam was raised by her aunts, after her mother left. These are women who work in the library, where half the books have guns in them. The women are Anna May, Angela Bassett, who may also be Scarlett's lover, Madeline, Carla Gugino, and Florence, Michelle Yeoh. In one sequence, Sam's arms are temporarily paralyzed by vile, nitrous oxide junkie Dr. Ricky, Michael Smiley. The elaborate fight scene that follows doesn't make much sense. The film also has a diner in which guns are allowed. Stop me if any of this sounds utterly familiar or just plain silly. The fight scenes on the other hand, featuring handguns, automatic weapons. Flying fists and legs are very well choreographed by stunt coordinator Laurent Demianoff, TV's John Clancy's Jack Ryan. But the film lacks the compelling Reeves Ian central figure. Also, the film's attempt to evoke the adult child bonding of Luke Besson's The Professional does not even come close. I am a big fan of Gillen's work. But she is much stronger presence as the cyborg in those Guardian of the Galaxy films. The problem seems to be director Navit Papushado, ABC's of Death 2, whose previous work is unfamiliar to me, and his writing partner, first-timer Ehud Lavsky. The dialogue mixes clichés with attempts at wit and whimsy that fall repeatedly flat. How about guns secreted in hollowed-out books by Austin, Bronte, Wolf and Christie? The score by Chaim Frank Ilfman is designed to mimic the work of the great Ennio Morricone. It does. The film's favorite color is glaring, comic book red.